Good morning. So, you know that from the libretto in Handel's Messiah, that part uh, where it says, get thee up on a high mountain? Uh, there's a whole lot of that getting thee up on the high mountain in the Bible because that is where God is to be encountered and that is where God changes people's lives. So it starts right with Noah. Noah's, Noah's ship lands on a high mountain and the result of that is the rainbow covenant, you know, God's rainbow covenant with humanity. Uh, the beginning of what we would call history, Abraham. Uh, Abraham goes up on Mount Moriah and he is to sacrifice his son, but remember the sacrificial lamb is there. And that is the place where the Dome of the Rock Mosque is today in the city of Jerusalem. Uh, also, Moses goes up on Mount Sinai and in the midst of the, the thunderous theophanies receives uh, the Ten Commandments, the Mosaic Covenant that uh, Frederick just read to us. Uh, we have, of course, uh, Elijah on Mount Carmel. And you may remember that incredible story of, of uh, his taking on the prophets of Baal. And they have the sort of burn off, right? And, and God ignites uh, the, the offering to him. And then, of course, we have Elijah on Mount Horab. And the still small voice comes by and and Elijah is shaken to the bone by God's still small voice. We have Mount Zion, which is next to Mount Moriah and the construction of the holy city of Jerusalem on Mount Zion. Uh, up in northern Israel today, we have, of course, the Sermon on the Mount given by Jesus uh, in the hills uh, above the Sea of Galilee. And now today, we have Jesus bringing the three people closest to him, Peter, James, and John, up a high mountain. When we were on our last parish pilgrimage, we also wanted to go up on that high mountain, that high mountain being Mount Tabor, the Mount of the Transfiguration. So we, we boarded our bus in downtown Nazareth and winded our way out of town and it comes down into a, a, a flat plain and rising up, jutting out of uh, this plain is Mount Tabor and it's all plain with the Mediterranean in the distance. Buses don't go up Mount Tabor, so we got off our bus and, and wound our way in a serpentine you know, road up to the top of Mount Tabor uh, in these cabs. On Mount Tabor, there's two churches. We visited the one uh, run by the Franciscans. And as you come toward the church, uh, the, we have done exactly what God asked uh, Peter not to do, right? Uh, Peter says, Lord, it's good that we are here so that we can build three booths, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. And Jesus passes on that. Well, now we have three booths, one for each of them, a large church of the transfiguration, and then each with a side chapel, one for Moses and one for Elijah. As you're walking toward the church on the top of Mount Tabor, on the right side, there is a, an elevated terrace it has a, a fence around it. If this was on the road, we would call it an overlook. Everybody on the terrace was looking down into the Verdant Valley, which is incredibly beautiful. But there was one man who was on his knees looking up toward the heavens like this. And he was, he was strikingly beautiful. I can see him in my mind's eye even now. He was wearing his native African dress and it was bright yellow and he had a bright green sash around his waist and he had very, very dark skin and it, it, was, it was just beautiful beyond belief to see him. He looked so bold and alive, it, it made the rest of us look like we were in that mon in the, um, the movie by, oh, who's the movie by? Um, we're going to do this. We're going to get me through this moment here. <laughs> Woody Allen. Okay? Maybe you've seen the movie. On one train, everything is black and white. And he's on that train. What's the name of that movie? Yeah, we can do that at the back after. On the right side, everything is in color, technicolor. And he's on the wrong train. And when I was looking at this man, I thought, I'm on the wrong train. He, this man is truly alive. And he was on his knees with his hands to the heavens like this, and you just had this incredible sense 
that he was sending messages to the divine and not only was he sending them but he was receiving them back in full technicolor it was as though he was in a rapture or in a vision uh, oblivious to the fact that there's anybody else on this terrace uh, and I wondered what he was seeing so I wondered did he see the radiance of Christ did he see Christ's face shining like the Sun and did he see Jesus's garments where it says today that they were dazzling white the, all the Gospels try to describe this as a, a, a clean a white that that no launderer could make such they, they can't there's no words for it but the garment is exploding with the light of God which is alive you know Paul in his letter to the Colossians says in Christ the fullness of divinity dwells and as I watched him on his knees I wondered if he could see the fullness of God's divinity dwelling in Jesus in the heavens in the letter from Peter that we just heard Peter is saying that we were eyewitnesses of this and he calls it majesty that's the word he chooses to describe this this light and as I was watching this man uh, in his what it looked to be his vision I wondered if he could see the radiance of God the radiance of the divine now it says in the scriptures suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them right and we heard about the cloud in that reading on Mount Sinai right the cloud is the being of God manifested in a way that we can see it right with our, our narrow vision we're all narrowly narrow here and the brightness in the cloud is the presence of divinity the presence of God's being that we can see inside the church in the apse the apse being uh, we don't have an apse an apse would be the curved portion of the back of a church uh, which you see particularly in some Orthodox churches and in the apse of the Church of the Transfiguration there is the scene of the Transfiguration but the mosaic that the scene is set in is all little dinky pieces of gold tile and that that gold tile is meant to represent that God's being in its brilliant brightness is descended upon all of them now you may remember from the reading also Peter says Peter calls God in that reading capital M and capital G majestic glory that's Peter's description of the being of God manifested this majestic glory so I wondered if this man on his knees could see God's majestic glory could he see the veil pulled back because we all we all live in a veiled light those who see on the other side always say the same thing that what we call light whether or not it comes in our windows or whether or not it comes through our bulbs is like living in shadow there's even a part of one of the burial offices that says those who walk in the shadow of death the shadow is that our light is dead but this light is alive with the being and spirit of God and I wondered if this guy could see into the heavens and he could see the light that was the true light the light that we will all see at some point and the light that is uh, attempted to be manifested on the reredos with those flecks coming down from above there's competition from a few movies about what is my favorite movie but if I had to choose I'd probably say the Blues Brothers and those of you who have spent a lot of time with the Blues Brothers and if you haven't I suggest you go home and see it as part of your make it part of your Lenten practice next week <laughs> So in the Blues Brothers, Joliet Jake, right? So Jake Blues has a religious experience while James Brown is laying it out as a gospel singer. It's a great scene, it's a fantastic scene. And Jake, in the back of the church, says, I see the light! I see the light! That's what we're supposed to do. That is the purpose of the last Sunday of Epiphany, is to I see the light. You're supposed to to see the light we're supposed to be James and John and Peter we're supposed to be that that man on his knees we're supposed to behold the radiance of Christ that's our that's our job behold the radiance of our Lord exploding with the fullness of God
I want to finish here with two small quotations from St. John of the Cross. He wrote a book called The Ascent of Mount Carmel, and he, he refers to this going, get thee up to a high mountain. Grow in your spiritual life by getting up on the mountain. And he says this, the hymn here is Jesus. Fix your eyes on him, and you will discern in him the secret mysteries and wisdom and wonders of God. And then he continues on, and he takes on the voice of God the Father, and he says this. Fix your eyes on him alone, because in him I have spoken and rendered all. And in him you will discover even more than you ask or desire. For he is my entire locution and response, vision and revelation, which I have already spoken, answered, manifested, and revealed to you by giving him to you as a brother, companion, master, ransom, and reward. On that day when I descended on him with my spirit on Mount Tabor proclaiming, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. So fix your eyes upon him and listen. Listen.